हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट एट योर होम नाउ आई हैव प्रिपेयर लेक्चर फॉर यू बाय हेल्प ऑफ दी वीडियो एंड नाउ इट इज अवेलेबल इन यूट्यूब आई एप्रिशिएट दी एफर्ट फ्रॉम दी पंडित दीनदयाल पेट्रोलियम यूनिवर्सिटी हु हैव प्रोवाइडेड दी प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर दी स्टूडेंट टू लर्न दी सब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम दी होम सो लेट आई बिगिन with the part 1 chapter 2 open channel flow which are included in hydraulic engineering this chapter 2 open channel flow are divided in two part one is the uniform flow and second one is the non uniform flow and as you aware my dear friend the subject code is 18cv216 so these are as i said you that it is divided in two part in section 1 we are going to learn about the classification of flow because it is too important to understand the open channel flow in uniform flow by the classification of different types of the flow second is the geometry elements in the channel sections third one is the velocity distribution in the channels this velocity distribution we identified initially by help of the chase formulas where we will derive the equation for the velocity and this velocity equation we use in the continuity equations as we know that continuity equation is q is equal to area into velocity right so here we try to derive the equation for the velocity and then we referred about the cutters formula which helpful for us to derive the values for the chase's constant c and the last one we have referred about the manning's equations so these are the part one which are including in the uniform flow and then second we are going to consider about the uh, most economic channel sections so my dear friends as we aware that uh, uh, the uniform flow concept uh, we use in civil engineering for construction of different types of the hydraulic structures and these hydraulic structures are responsible to discharging the water from one location to the other location so if i will say the example then you all will aware that yes the canal which are one of the best example of of taking the water or discharging the water from one place to the other place and the best example is uh, uh, nearby to you for example of the main canal so we know that of the main canal which are of taking the water from the sardar sarovar dam and until the kutch and by using the of the main canal we are irrigating the land in the different amounts but if you mark the of the main canal carefully then you can see that the section of the of the main canal is in red angles right uh, so uh, uh, trapezoid sorry it is in the trapezoid right so we say that why these trapezoidal sections are adopted for of the main canal so these are all the questions and queries we have that which type of the sections are more suitable or most suitable for construction of the man made structures so at the time we are going to refer about uh, the most economic channel section that we started from the rectangle channel sections trapezoidal channel sections circular channel sections and the triangular channel sections so these are the content uh, divided in section 1 and 2 and uh, all the materials i say that it is available in google class and these are the code of the google class where you can simply go through the uh, google class login and put it the code as zxlblvg and you directly enter in google class where i uploaded all the ppts including starting from the dimensional analysis uniform flow non uniform flow and the orifices and mouth pieces in addition i also uploaded uh, the assignments uh, for you and these assignment will help you to do the practice at your home it is including first the theoretical part and the second one is the examples but perhaps you can start solving those examples after completing the video part so for that i suggest you you please kindly listen all the contents very carefully okay friends so don't worry about you uh, you can learn the subject even though uh, by sitting to your home also you can refer all the contents very well 
so let i will begin uh, section one in the uniform flow right yes so now the first question in our mind that what means of the open channel flow and again further the open channel flow are divided in uniform and non-uniform or either steady and unsteady flow but before it we have to understand very clearly that what means of the open channel flow most of the assumptions we have that the channel which are open and which obtaining the water from one to the other places then we say that it is an open channel flow but it is not true exactly we consider the open channel flow means the flow which having the free surface please keep carefully keep in mind carefully the key words that it is the free surface now what means of the free surface here so free surface we consider as the surface which having the atmospheric pressures it means the water which pass through any sections either it is rectangle trapezoidal triangle or circular channel sections where the water will pass from one section to the other sections under the atmospheric pressures or under the gravitational forces right no other external force will be at behind to push the water from one to the other section so this flow mostly we consider as the open channel flow based example i say that open channel flow are like the canal flow or either i will say that the flow in the river so these are we consider uh, that this is the example of the open channel flow right now uh, understanding the open channel flow we have to understand or we have to classify the different types of the flows right so any structure in mostly in the civil engineering which are dealing with the fluids are uh, depends on or the water or either the any fluids pass through the any sections or any channels are depending on which type of the flow it is carries and depends on we are preparing the different kind of the designs right so understanding uh, uh, how we are constructing the different type of the structure in civil engineering especially for dealing with the fluid mechanics we have to understand the different types of the flows so first flow i can consider as it is the steady flow so you can see here even the steady flow and the unsteady flow so steady flow now see every fluids when it is flow from any sections are depends on velocity yes discharge yes and the depth of the flow right so very simple way we will define that what is the steady flow so we consider as the steady flow are those flows in the depth of the flow velocity of the flow and rate of the flow at any point in open channel do not change with respect to the time keep in mind carefully this keyword do not change with respect to the time this flow we consider as the steady flow right so it means velocity discharge and depth it does not change with respect to the time at any point in any sections we consider as it is the steady flow so what means of the steady flow now guys so we say unsteady flow is it's totally the opposite to the steady which are not actually in the steady position it means the velocity in the sections r might be changed from considering the bottom of the channel until to the topmost of the channel same way that discharge also change from one section to the other sections and the depth of the flow is also changed from one point to the other point it means the velocity discharge and the depth of the flow which are not constant it is change continuously then we consider as it is the unsteady flow right so these are the first types of the flow we are differentiate in fluid mechanics we consider as it is the steady flow and the unsteady flow right now the next part is about the uniform flow and non uniform these are most emphasized because the open channel flow are divided initially in the uniform flow and later it will be non uniform flow before understanding uniform non uniform i will give you a very simple example like the water which pass through the canal right so canal sections are certain it means the depth of the canal width of the canal or either the side abutment of the canal or either the water which flow in the canal are certain are constant right so this flow which pass through this certain type of the cross sections we consider as the uniform flow 
whereas non-uniform flow we consider the best example of uh, the river flow so in the river we know that the sections are changed its beds are changed it means uh, when the water will pass through those sections it's continuously changed from section to the sections so these are the example we consider as the non-uniform flow so definition part it's again very easy to understand we say that if for the given length of the channel the velocity of the flow depth of the flow slope of the channel and the cross section remain constant the flow is said to be uniform and if uh, the channel slope length velocity depths are not constant we consider as it is the non-uniform flow now non-uniform flow are further divided in two parts one is the rapidly varies flows and another one is the gradually varies flows we can understand by help of this figure now you can see that uh, these are uh, one simple channel where the flow which are flowing from left to the right directions and it is obstructed by small hydraulic structure in between so these are the entire actually the concept we are going to learn which are divided in two part uniform and non-uniform flow so before obstruction and before rising the water level through this obstruction we are observing that the depth of this water in the channel the velocity in this portion and as well as discharge in this portion are constant it's not changed so we consider as it is the uniform flow but after certain length you see that the water is obstructed by the hydraulic structure right so due this obstruction water will start to clean or gradually rise above the hydraulic structures and later it will be fall at the downstream sides and again it will be rapidly increase right so the, this portion we will consider as the non-uniform flow and certainly we will refer it in the part 2 in the chapter 2 where we consider as the non-uniform flow so here we say that the water which are rising at the upstream side of the hydraulic structure in form of the gradually rising flow and same time the water which we are observing at the downstream side where it is gradually rise rapidly so we are uh, defining the definition part here that the rapidly varies flows are uh, the rapidly flows are defined as that type of flow in which the depth of the flow these are the depth so these are the depth of the flow changes abruptly so again you remember this keyword very carefully that the meaning is abruptly it means it is change it in the shorter length so you can see here suppose this depth you consider as y1 and this depth you consider as y2 then you can understand the difference between y1 and y2 in the smaller distance are so high and these we consider as abruptly so these are the abruptly changing the depth of the water over the small length of the channel so we consider as rapidly varied flows and mostly the gradually varied flow which are generating at the upstream side of the channel uh, we consider that if the depth of the flow in the channel changes gradually these are changes gradually over the long length it is the long length so it is over the long length of the channel the flow is said to be gradually varies flow and, uh, and shortly we call that it is gvf and it is the rvf but this portion we are going to learn it in part two and these are we are going to learn it in form of the uniform flow I will also show you one of uh, the small video where you exactly understand that how it is behaving the gradually vary and the rapidly varies flows and again it is divided in part of the supercritical subcritical and the critical flow so let me have to see the video so water is flowing and you can see that it is obstructed by the structures right small structures so here you can see very clearly that the uh, water the depth of the water at the upstream side is very high depth of the water at the downstream side is low high depth less velocity high discharge and here you can see that uh, the less depth high velocity and high discharge and now again you can see that when the supercritical flow are obstructed by some structure some repels which are generating on the surface we call that hydraulic jump so these are the exactly the example of 
gradually where is flows and the rapid where is flows and again rapidly where is flows are divided in part of the hydraulic jump so certainly this portion we are going to cover in part 2 open channel flow but again it is the non uniform it is not uniform you can see that the depth are changed velocity are changed the discharge are changed so this part we consider as the non uniform flow right so now let me begin further let me continue further and uh, further it is um, uh, uh, as you all will aware about the laminar flow and turbulent flow if you remember carefully my dear friends we have conducted one experiment in laboratory right by using the Reynolds apertures where you can apply the equations and uh, you find out the value for Reynolds by using the rho vd by mu and uh, we consider that if the value is less than 500 600 then we say that it is the laminar flow and if the value of re is greater than 2000 then we consider as the turbulent flow so again these are the important equation which is helpful to defining the laminar and turbulent flow but earlier we uh, observed that it is the uniform and non-uniform flow right so this non-uniform flow further classified in three parts one is subcritical flow one is critical flow and one is the supercritical flow these three flows are depends on the fraud equations and we derived earlier in dimensional analysis dimensional is numbers and for example Reynolds is one of the numbers these are the dimensional list numbers same way that we have derived the fraud numbers ap and these aps are depends on velocity of flow and the gravitational force and the hydraulic mean depth right so under root of uh, gravitational force multiplied by the hydraulic mean depth so we get the value of ap now these ap are important now these ap if you get the value is this means the value of putting the value of velocity g into d under root of and if you get the value ap is less than one please listen carefully that ap is less than one right so this flow we consider as the subcritical flow so subcritical flow now we define that it is the type of flow where the value of ap is less than one so but obvious that what is the supercritical flow so these are the subcritical and supercritical so supercritical flows here we define that the values are greater than one right so these are the two that we can define less than one and the greater than but but now we let you assume that if the value will come two is equal to one so f e is equal to one then we'll consider that the flow is the critical flow so further the non-uniform flow are divided in three parts subcritical flow supercritical flow and the critical flow right so uh, let i recap very quick that what are the content we have referred so we started from the open channel flow so uh, what we say that guys all of you yes so this is the flow which consists with the free surface or which uh, flow under the atmospheric pressures right so this flow we consider as the open channel and again the flow are classified in the steady flow on steady flow steady flow are depending on the velocity discharge and depth of the flow and which uh, does not change with respect to the time we consider as the steady and simultaneously unsteady it's are totally opposite to the steady flow uniform flow non-uniform flow that we consider as the length of the channel velocity depth which does not change with respect to the cross section or area of the flow so we consider as uniform flow and then it is the non-uniform flow and the non-uniform are divided in rapidly various flows and the gradually various flows and again non-uniform flow are divided in part of subcritical critical and the supercritical flow so these are the important parts where we are defining first the different types of the flow and based on this type of the flow we are divided the open channel flow in two parts one is the uniform flow and another one is the non-uniform flow so in again uniform flow that uh, the, our objective is to find out the discharge from the sections now sections here we assume in uniform flow are certain that means the certain cross sections the structures we consider as like the canal but the canal sections we consider as either it is the 
trapezoidal sections either it is the rectangle sections or either it is the uh, uh, for example if we are taking the water from the canal by piping action then we consider as the circular sections right so in all these sections if we refer one thing is very common where we have to find out the velocity carefully and this velocity later we multiply it with the area then we know that by help of the continuity equation we can find out the value of discharge so q is equal to area into velocity right so deriving those equation here we say that discharge through the open channel by help of the chase's formula so chase's has initially derived the value for velocity and this velocity equation multiply with the area then we are define the value of flow from the channel that we consider as the discharge so let we understand first they we divided the rectangle channel in the section 1 and section 2 and this channel having the length is l and having the angle with the horizontal with for example i and the water which are conserving between the channel section 1 and 2 consider as the weight of the water and this weight of the water which are making the angle with the horizontal is i for example then as we know that by help of the law of resolution that you have learned it in mechanics of solids or engineering mechanics where when you resolve the any force in horizontal or in vertical direction it will make the component sin component or cos component so suppose you will resolve your force in the opposite direction of the angle then it will make the sin angle and if you will resolve the force towards the direction of the angle then it will make the cos angle right so these are the important terms where it is attached with deriving the theory for the equation of chase's formula for velocity equations so we consider as uh, the length of the channel yes then the area total cross section area of the channel i is the slope of the channel v is the velocity of the flow from one to the other sections perimeter yes these are the important parameter perimeter we consider that where the water is in contact with the surface so for example it is rectangle channel then we know that rectangle is consist with three sides one is the bottom bed of the channel and two other is the abutment right so when we pass some water from the rectangle channel then the water is in contact with the bed of the channel and two abutments so we say that the perimeter weighted perimeter of the channel is two side abutment plus the bed of the channel so these are the parameter we consider in the equations and the important parameters is also friction force so we all know we are aware that friction force are acting when when you are any water is passed through any sections it is observed that uh, some friction force are acting this friction force are produced through the surface of the channel or either the uh, two abutments of the channel and it is always acting in the opposite directions so now what we do that here we try to sum up the different forces are acting on water which are flowing from one section to the other sections right and then we are taking the submission of all the forces are acting in x directions x in positive direction x in negative direction so let we have to see that what are the forces are acting right so first we consider as the weight of the water between what the section 1 and section 2 right so weight of the water we consider that it is the specific weight of the water and the volume of the water so volume of the water we define that area into the length and the specific weight now earlier i have inform you that we are resolving the all forces in x direction so we are taking the component actually so we resolve this component in x directions x direction so that this component i will resolve in this x direction and it is in opposite direction of the angle opposite direction of this angle then i will take the value of sin i right so i say that it is the w sin i but what tends for w so w is the weight of the water so this w will insert in the equation so it is w al sin i right now we call that it is the equation 
and the second we consider that uh, as we know when water will flow from one section to the other section some amount of the frictions will be acting it always in opposite direction we try to resist this flow in the opposite direction so that we consider as the friction force right it is acting in the opposite direction and it is defined we have derived the equation earlier that f into surface area into velocity n so velocity n is nothing but it is the square power of uh, the equation of and now we derive the friction resistance again the motion is fpl into v square right so these you call that equation two so these are the two major forces we are observing when when the water is passed through the uniform channel sections right one is the component of water in x direction and the second is the friction force which are acting in the opposite directions so total force we consider which are acting on section 1 to the 2 on the water so we consider the first force is the component of water it means the water weight of the water itself it is in x directions and the second force will be the friction force the resistant force which are acting in the opposite directions third force we consider as the pressure force but you can see that the pressure force are acting in section 1 and pressure force are acting in section 2 both are same so that we consider as either it is neglected from one to the other but because the values are nearby the same so now we resolve all the forces in the x direction then we say that one force is the weight of water itself and another one is the friction force which is acting in the opposite direction so w a l sin i minus f p l v square is equal to zero right now we interested as earlier we define that we are deriving the theory for what so we are deriving theory for velocity so velocity that means that we try to prepare the equations in form of the velocity so v square is equal to what so v square if you we'll put in other side of the equation then we get that w a l sin i upon f p into l right now w upon f a by p and sin i so v is equal to under root of w f under root of a by p sin i now a is the area and p is the perimeter and the division of p considered as it is a hydraulic mean depth and it is considered by the symbol the small m so instead a by p i can insert the value in the equation m right so it is m sin i i is the angle angle of the channel and now w by f we consider as the cheese is constant we consider here that w the specific weight of the water and the friction force again it is depends on specific it depends on the density of the water and the friction which depends on the different types of the surface so this we consider under root of w upon f is the change is constant c so now we consider the equation for velocity v is equal to c under root of mi right so v is the velocity and c under root of mi but we know that from the continuity equations q is equal to what trends yes q is equal to area into velocity so a into v right and this v we consider as c under root of mi so q we consider as a c under root of mi so these are the first equation that we derived in uniform flow where the channel sections are constant where we derive the equation to finding out the flow in the cross sections q is equal to ac under root of mi let you speak it with me five times so that you friends you remember the equation very carefully that in uniform flow but keep in mind very carefully that this equation is applicable in uniform flow only uniform means the depth velocity and discharge per sections are always and always constant right so q is equal to ac under root of mi q is equal to ac under root of mi q is equal to ac under root of mi q is equal to ac under root of mi q is equal to ac under root of mi yes that's great guys you all remember it very well good good so now let me start the example so you understand that how we applying those values very carefully right so uh, i will take the first example which consider it for a rectangle channel so the example is about find the velocity of what so velocity of the flow and the rate of the flow of the water through a red angle channel of now the red angle that means we consider in section that the red angle which made by one bottom and two sides right so here it is defined that red angle channel 
6 meter wide and 3 meter in deep when it is running full the channel is having the bad slope is 1 in 2000 now take the values of chase is, is equal to 55 right so if you enlist that what are the data which are given you in the example then if you will start writing the values in form of then we say that depth d is equal to 3 meter now width b we consider as 6 meter and the slope i we consider as 1 raised to it means 1 divided by 2000 and the c will be 55 so you see that uh, as you know that area is equal to for a angle channel so let i will show you the same example by help of this pdf right this uh, are uh, the bunsel book and uh, i already uploaded it in google class so you can download and start referring the examples by yourself here i would like to show the steps that uh, how you are deriving the value for the rate of the flow in the uniform flow in rectangle sections right so b is the total six meter width d is the depth so area we know that in the rectangle channel six into three very easy so it is 18 meter square right and the slope is 1 by 2000 which already given you in the example c is the chase's equations and it is the value is 55 it is already given you in the example so we consider that p is equal to b plus 2d right so 6 plus 2 into 3 is 12 meters so m is equal to a by p so 18 by 2 so it is 1.5 meter right so earlier we defined by help of chase's v is equal to what c and the root of mi so now c we have 55 m we have it is 1.5 and i 1 by 2000 put it in the equation then you get the value for velocity is equal to 1.506 meter per second see that it's ma made by the dark right bold so be care that guys i know i assess recently your mid semester paper and i evaluated and i mark it carefully that the major student they get the answer correctly but they are forgetting to write the unit carefully after the answer of uh, each equation right so here that we consider the velocity is the parameter and it value come is y 1.506 but in what so it come in meter per second by the meter per second you understand that it is the velocity if you write only 1.506 then it nothing to stand in the equations it is shows only the number and number is not meaningful to finding out the value for this child right so it is important to write this unit very carefully if you forget this unit sure i am sure in the final examination i will again deduct half and marks right so q now we derived by help of the continuity equation q is equal to area into velocity or either velocity into area velocity we got it by help of the chase's equations and the area we have derived 6 into 3 it means 18 right let me multiply so we get the value 20 c 1.108 again don't forget the unit unit is what we know that for this chart it is in meter cube per second so these two units you have to write it very carefully right so these are the first example where we derive the equations for the discharge but my dear friends as we discussed earlier and these are the examples right so my dear friends we discussed earlier that the uniform flow it means the sections are certain it dimension are certain so we derived earlier that they what will be the possibilities of construction of the canal so these are the possibilities either we construct the canal in rectangle channel trapezoidal channel triangle channel or either if we pass the water from the canal to other location by help of the pipe then we can prepare the circular sections right so these are the certain sections so but obvious that in every example you can see that the sections are either rectangle sections trapezoidal sections or either triangle sections or lastly it will be the circular sections right so these are the mostly the section we are considering and see that in chase's equation c we have de uh, v we have derived c under root of area into i right uh, m into i right and the same way discharge we have derived so these are the altering parameters where we can find out by help of the examples so these are the altering parameter for example find the slope 
so in early example we find the what velocity and through that we find out the discharge in the channel right so these are the alter examples that means here we try to find out the slopes other parameters is given you in the example for example width is given you then the depth of the water is given you the discharge is given you then the phase is constant is given you it means the, it is kind of the reverse example where now we find out the slope so we know the equations right so let i will show you the second example mm, yes so you see that uh, in this example uh, width discharge depth is given you now we have to find out the value of i so now uh, we can find out m a by p area we can find out b into d 10 meter square m a by p 10 by 9 that we get it and the important part discharge is given you so let i will put the value into equation q is equal to c under root of m i right area into c under root of m i so these are the stands for area and these are stand for c under root of m i so 10 50 10 by 9 into y so this we divide and then we get the value so i will stand it for when i will insert all the values in the equation then i will get the value slope is 1 by 6 9 4 so these are the all important parameters mostly we derive for example you assume that you have to construct the canal so what parameter you have keep in mind to take the decision to construct this canal in field so these are the decision parameter that means what is the width you propose what is the depth you propose what is the slope you propose so that you get the discharge q1 q2 q3 q4 so this is all depends on the hydraulic engineers that how and what are the parameters he required to propose the different kind of the sections. So these are the example I consider as it is your homework. Yeah, but certainly you have to do some practice at your home my dear friend. Without it, it will not possible to understand the concept because these are the numerical concept and for numerical you have to write and solve those example in your notebook otherwise you cannot be able to solve it correctly i am very sure that because i see that you forget most of the students are forget to write the unit correctly in the examination so removing those mistakes uh, i am sure these are the good time to learn this subject by the online by help of this video and write down all these uh, uh, examples in your notebook and then uh, you can see that how you are improving your work in day by day activities these are the third example see that i just changed the cross section earlier we have taken the cross section as the right angle cross sections but now it is changed in trapezoidal right so trapezoidal section might you understand means of the trapezoidal sections so let i will show you exactly how it's look like so these are the trapezoidal sections and in this these are the same example here where depth is given you, width is given you, and these are the two side abutments. So initially you find out the area, then you find out the perimeter, steps are remain same. After finding the parameters and area, you can find out the value A by P, and then you apply this value in the continuity equation Q A C under root of M I, area you already derived and c constant it is given you in the example 50 yes 50 and under root of m or i multiply by i right so you get the value of discharge so these are the very simple example but you can see that here just the channel sections or channel section is change so change the value so change the value in form of what so changes the values in area changes the values in parameter but again the center equation to finding out uh, the constant discharge are immense. So these are the examples I say that and where you get the different values. I am sure that if you make the practice at your home, you understand and you get the value it correctly. So these are the third example, same way fourth example, fifth example and these are all the examples already. Uh, I already said that these PPTs are available in google class code is i already provided and till if you find any difficulties not understanding the either the parameters or either the changes equations you can contact me via my mail id 
dhruvesh dot patel at the rate sot dot pdpu dot ac dot in or either you can write the comment in google class or either we can connect it through whatsapp group also so i am very much thankful you my dear friend that you have listened this video very carefully and you understand the concept of uniform flow and change these equations and deriving the values for uniform flow discharge q is equal to a multiplied by c under root of mi so thank you so much to all of you these are the part one and soon i will prepare the part two where i will start covering about the value of c and the other part thank you thank you so much bye bye